Hi everyone. So it's Vanessa Jean here from coming live from Dublin. I'm just going to readjust this. As you can see, I'm in my hotel here and I just felt really called to share this with you and to just um, take you on a little bit of a journey. Today we went to some beautiful magical places in Ireland and really connected with the earth here as I have been in many of the sacred sites around the UK. So today it was Newgrange and it was very peaceful and succulent and there weren't too many people so it was rather yummy. I did a little video for you all with some sacred sound which I will post later for you. But what I wanted to share with you was um, working with a couple of, a few essential oils that um, you might enjoy working with in a different way. So the melody that I created tonight for Tash and I, my friend that I'm traveling around with, um, is something to really connect us deeply with our womb space and that sacred womb energy and the great mother energy because we felt so deeply connected with the earth today. So the essential oils that actually came to me to use were geranium, manuka, Sorry people from the UK, that might be a tease to have this one in here, but Monica, and for those of you coming to our workshops here, you can come and have a smell of it. We'll be in Belfast Tuesday night. And Helichrysum. So what's really interesting about these essential oils is geranium, which is one I don't necessarily love the smell of all of the time. I really love working with her different times in my cycle and at the moment she smells absolutely wonderful and I'm not cycling at all so it's just one that obviously my body is really calling to and singing with and I just feel her just kind of connecting the womb and the heart together. She really assists with dissolving anger, resentment, pain, heartache, heartbreak and grief and what I'm feeling with the support with this is there's been a lot of pain for people in history with the land, right? A lot of heartache, a lot of heartbreak, a lot of grieving, lands that have been taken from them, um, disconnection points, uh, sovereignty removed from people, uh, disconnection from heart and belly and land. A lot of the ancient symbols where we went today in Newgrange have been, their meaning has been lost. So even the tour guide, he was amazing. He was really wonderful but um, even he didn't know all of the symbols. You can only go to Newgrange now with a tour, so they're really protecting um, the whole area. So they believed it in, initially, they believed that um, it was tombstones um, and the archeologists have, have looked into it. And though there have been bodies buried there, uh, if you look at a lot of you know cathedrals and sacred places, often uh, people um, of reverence or high importance have been encrypted somewhere within those sacred places. So different cathedrals around the world, you'll see bishops or um, archbishops, you know, the entombment of people in, I guess, higher or more spiritual places often occurs in these places. What I really loved about this was their openness now to the idea that this was a sacred place for sacred ritual. And indeed it does feel that way, absolutely. So it is a huge area, it's a huge landmass. Um, and then the, the structure itself of Newgrange, it's like a, a grass mound and it sits on about an acre of the earth. And it's older actually than the pyramids of Giza by 500 years and older than Stonehenge by a thousand years, which is interesting. Now, similar to Stonehenge, it works with the sun and the alignment of the sun at the winter solstice. The winter solstice is coming up with this hemisphere um, on in, in December, right? So we will often look at it, you know, people, it really comes to their awareness around that 21st of December. So the energy around it from the 20th to the 23rd is really, really strong. And what they've done is, the mound is a big dome shape and there are massive monoliths all around it. And then above that, the, the mound's huge, right? So there's all of this green above here. So it's like rocks at the bottom. Do Google it, have a look. And then here, they have all this quartz crystal stone above it. 
Um, and it's a bit controversial whether that was meant to be there or not, or whether that was the stone pathway. But what I found was the, the crystal itself, wherever it was back in the time, would have amplified the energy of the place, right? And cleansed it and clarified it and brought a higher alignment with the divine and great for manifestation. So the way this is structured, you guys, it, you know, it, you, you go in and it's tiny. So the Neolithic um, humans of that time were much shorter. So on average around four foot 11. So even for me, I'm only five foot two, you, you know, you're crashing down and going in under and you pass where the entry stone is, which is engraved with some beautiful artistry. And the engraving is one that most of us are pretty familiar with, and it's the, the triple spiral, the tri-spiral. And um, it's placed right at the center of it. And then there's some beautiful, you know, triangular shapes. It's, it's like pyramid shapes and diamond shapes there. Um, so you you go in and they've got you going in in a safe way so by sta stairs that they've built so that these stones are preserved and no one's touching them and eroding them and you go in and it's tiny like I said and as you walk in it's this very narrow passageway and you you see it and it's the shape of a cross right so it's a long passage that way and then it runs um, east to west west to east that way so that whole north south south north and that line going across now on the east side it's really beautiful it's there's some beautiful engravings on the rocks there and up top on the ceiling which is it's all these amazing stones it's huge like huge stones they have all these engravings and the spirals and there's like a basin in this point and it almost looks like that like a baptismal basin actually so it's interesting, you know, with the advent of Catholicism and um, Christianity and a lot of these that have taken on the Celtic traditions, we know, right? But there's like a, a stone at the bottom and then this beautiful basin shaped stone above it. So they believe that could have been for maybe baptismal rites or cleansing rites, something like that, but something of high re um, relevance. And in most cathedrals on the east side, true east, which is, you know, f for the sunrise, um, it is usually the most beautiful section of a cathedral. So that was really special looking at that actually. And, and they were so smooth. I mean, it's just, you know, doesn't it just blow your mind back in these times where they had like no machinery, no technology that we have now. And yet they have these massive, you know, monoliths that they're carting across and it had to come across water. There was no bridge there. It was fast running river water. So, Maybe boats, maybe magic, maybe sound. Who knows? We'll never know. But they're there. Now, on the, um, as you stand at the back, so you're looking at the cross and you're standing back here, looking back toward where the entry stone is, there is an entry, like a, a hole that you see when you first come in, where the sunlight can come in. But when you get in, it's down on the ground because you, you come up, you're elevated. So now the sun's coming in, the ray comes in at the winter solstice and it hits the earth there and it comes up and it lights up like a shaft of light coming down through that center part of the cross. It's very magical, it's very beautiful. So what they do here is they have a lottery for um, everyone who wants to go there on the solstice and for the, I think it was five days um, leading up to the solstice, then people get to come in and experience that. And if there's cloud cover and there's no sun coming in, then you're standing in the dark for 20 minutes and it's pitch black. They have lights there, of course, but for the purposes of the solstice, they keep it black so everyone can see that. Now, let's go back to um, why I've chosen these essential oils. Now, what they believe is, is this has become this space that we're standing in. So like at this center point of the, the cross. So even if you imagine the Celtic cross and that circle in the middle, it's like we were standing in that circle in the middle. They said it was like the womb of mother earth. And it very much was like standing in the womb of the goddess. I have to tell you, it was, it was very peaceful. It was very blissful. It was very holding space, very, you know, like encasing, like she was wrapping us up. Um, so the geranium, just coming back to that, she, I felt with this blend that I've created, 
she's like just working through with that that healing any of the traumas that people have experienced that anger the war the war times i don't just mean a war i mean war type times conflict um the land is really luscious there it's very replenishing um it's it's where the first lot of farming came into ireland actually it's like uh, you know he said 20 shades of green i'm i'm not kidding you it's, it looked like a you know at least 60 different shades of green there it, it was sublime it was really beautiful so this is kind of where that the halachrism comes in now because she works really beautifully with the pain body so at a physical level when you cut yourself um you can put halachrism on to help with the the cut but she's also nicknamed magic stitches because it helps to heal the wound to seal that over and for the skin to to return to its natural state yeah energetically she works with the pain body the heart the solar plexus the mind the emotions so i found combining these two together was really beautiful the geranium and the halachrism and then we have this beautiful kiss of manuka in there so i had like 10 mils of the fractionated coconut oil in my wee bowl here and i actually put three drops of geranium so it was quite a higher dose of this and then two drops of halachrism and two drops of manuka so it's higher than I would normally do because I would normally say you know 10 mils five drops of essential oil enough they're all very gentle essential oils though I found this to be a very nourishing ratio and nourishing blend this blend interestingly is actually very um, supportive very holding and it is amazing for the skin it's an incredible skin blend as well I was tempted to put blue tansy in there just for the skin support, but I didn't. So I have those three in there. Now our skin being the largest organ of our body is being fed and nourished. And I could, I was like, I could almost feel my cells thrumming with this. You know, I was like recalibrating. It's like, let's just create a new story here inside me for this land. And I just put out a prayer as I rubbed it over my womb. And I just kind of put out a, a, a prayer for healing for the land here and for the people here and for the spirits of the land as well. It was really yummy. Monica is so protective of that queenly energy of the sacred feminine. So I found that Monica fitted really perfectly with that. And the Halachrism and Monica are very divine oils. So really connecting and aligning with the divine, however that looks for you, yeah? So the sound I hear with this is like, and I just kind of feel that waving, waving, waving through me and just like singing that through the womb and up into my heart and, and up into my head and just connecting this, this beautiful alignment with the divine. It's a gorgeous way um, to really connect in ourselves and geranium is such a deep beautiful essential oil married with that halachrism and manuka to just help restore us to our natural state to bring that cycle of healing in us so that we feel empowered knowing that we are bringing that to ourselves after I aromatically dressed in these essential oils I then actually layered with the it's called cellubel in Australia but it's immortelle for a lot of the other markets and the reason was I really wanted to connect with the myrrh in this um, there's very very sacred essential oils in here of frankincense our beloved Frankie boy and Hawaiian sandalwood lavender myrrh more halachrism and rose and rose works with the sacred heart energy and the heart itself so that's very beautiful blend so I just spiraled that over my womb and then just brought it up and then just spiraled it over my heart and just put another prayer out there to the universe which was really beautiful very connecting and then you can just kind of you know take some which I did and I just did a couple of dots under the eyes on my Ajna and a swipe across there and just close my eyes and just massaged and just said a little prayer for connection that the veil be lifted that I see clearly and I serve the high good of all concerned as I align with the divine and you can anoint this on your wrists as well and just put a little bit on your palms if you want to and just breathe it in so something else I'd really love to um, leave you with is this 
We have the Verrage kit with that beautiful serum which has the Immortel in it that I was talking about. And doTERRA also has a hydrating cream which I found super nourishing while I've been traveling. I've been home a total of 12 weeks this year, um, traveling around the world sharing my passion and my love for plant medicine, essential oils, but also toning and meditation and connecting with the earth and food and retreats, you know. So I found this to be a saving grace, this last trip that I've been on. And what I've done is, is I've just put a little scoop of this on my hand and a squeeze of the serum and not even a drop of the blue tansy, just like a wet on my hand, just like it, it literally looks like a crescent moon. So you just take it off and you just let that wet your hand on the side there. And you can see it's very blue. <laughs> um, you'll feel like Avatar with it, it's very yummy. She smells sublime. She's very sweet, another heavenly and heart opening essential oil. I feel like I'm so deeply connecting with God and Goddess with this beautiful baby. The blue tansy, interestingly, is quite a bright yellow flower. As an essential oil, she's very blue. So you'll see there's blue tansy in our balance um, essential oil, giving it that beautiful blue. So as you massage this over your face, massage it over your throat and over your heart center, and just really be aware of calling in that beautiful healing from the blue tansy to feed and nourish your skin, right? To just replenish you, to open the heart and to just shine a light really beautifully and brightly in the world. And you can take that over your hands. I've been working it over my hands. I've got some little fine dots from living in Australia, driving my car and little sunspots um, kind of appearing there. And I've just been really nourishing and hydrating with the blue tansy and the Salubel or Immortel just taking that after I've got my carrier oil or base on it and just, you know, rubbing that off. The reason I place them in a carrier oil is because they will flash off quite quickly. Yeah, so you want to place them in a carrier. And that geranium, helichrysum and manuka is here in my little bowl. You can see I've already done it in there. And I have this in my wild oils bowl. These are my favorite. No trees are felled for this. Wild oils. Um, I think it's .com, maybe .com.au. Have a look at their website and they're on Facebook as well. They have such integrity. They make beautiful wooden boxes, homes for our essential oils as well. And you know, like I have like a like a wooden tray where I put my food oils on as well and, and an aromatic dressing stand with them all on it. Anyway, so I'm just saying, so, so divine. I love dipping into wood and just dipping into that well of love and then putting it on my body. So aromatic dressing is this beautiful ritual of anointing the self with love and placing these essential oils in big circular motions over the body from the bottom of your body. So like your ankles coming up your legs all the way up towards your heart, your arms, you're doing everything. You're bending over and doing your back and you can look at my YouTube channel for the full video of it, but just really nourish yourself. And with something like this, you know, as you're aromatically dressed daily, be telling your body how you, you know, how much you love it. When you're working with a sacred blend like this with an intention to connect more with the divine, you know, things like ask for, um, you know, that courage to stand in your truth, to walk forward on the path of your heart to beam that light out from your heart, that your heart be a magnet out into the world to draw to you the gifts that you're summoning, that your mind be clear and focused, you know, with intention putting out to the universe what you're calling in, and then your heart acts as that magnet bringing it in, right? Over your throat, you might just ask for that voice to express your truth and your joy, or maybe you'd like to do some toning and play with that. You know, I don't have a great voice or singing voice. You heard me tone before. There's nothing brilliant about my voice, but it doesn't matter. It's like you're aligning with the divine, you're serving the divine, you're here in servants of love, in, in service to love. And, you know, I think if that's our ministry in the world, who cares what you sound like? Just release it, just let it out and trust that the divine will flow through you and your light moves through you. So having said that, if you'd like to join me, let's just do a couple of ohms together. So just taking a deep breath and let's use that beautiful tool from God.
Sade turvareniam Bargude asya dimahi Diyoyona prachodaya Om Shanti 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 Namaste. So just to finish on our little holy trinity for tonight, we have geranium, Monica, and halachrism, and then we layered with the Solubel or Immortel. For those of you that don't have the Manuka, please feel free to use whatever you intuitively want to use. I'm feeling the Hawaiian sandalwood would be absolutely succulent in this blend. Otherwise, you could try cedarwood if you'd love to just connect with more people, community, yumminess. The Hawaiian sandalwood as well as the cedarwood will also connect you with the divine really beautifully also. So, um, for anyone wanting to take out the manuka and maybe put some myrrh in, feel free to do that. That will connect you with that crone mama energy in the sacred womb space and the divine goddessy yummy depth energy, like really going into the heart of the mother. So, great blend for men and women. Halachrism, manuka, and geranium laid with the cellubel slash immortel. And you place it in an aromatic dressing bowl with the fractionated coconut oil. Pop it in there, 10 mils. And I put three drops of geranium, two drops of halachrism, and two drops of manuka. Remember, I just said I was just doing a little bit of a stronger dose, a little bit higher. They're all very gentle oils that will feed you and nourish you. Thank you all so much for having me. I've loved this journey with you all. I will see you soon. Feel free to subscribe to our newsletter, which is every month, again, on the website, foodalchemy.com.au. Take care. Goodbye, everyone.